G'day guys, in this particular video I'm going to be showing you how to calculate a moment. So what is the moment of F about point O? So here we've got a force acting on a flagpole, and at the very base of this flagpole we've got a point O. And we're asked to calculate the moment of this force about point O. Now, before I even start, I just want to reiterate that there's actually a lot of ways you can approach this problem, and I'm going to be showing you two of those ways. So I'll just write down method one, which is probably the most obvious way to solve this problem is to draw the geometry. So here's our flagpole and here is our force vector just here, right? Then what we can do is, in method one at least, we can multiply this force F or 10 newtons by the perpendicular distance from our force towards our point, which will be this distance D. This is our distance D. And, so let me write this down, this is going to be F, this is going to be D, and we can actually find it by saying MO, MO is going to be equal to F, in this case 10 newtons, times by D, which you'll have to figure out from the geometry of the situation. Right, this is one way which will definitely work. I promise you, and in fact as a separate exercise, I strongly recommend you try it. However, I'm not going to solve this using this method. Instead, I'm going to solve it using a separate method, which we're probably a little bit unfamiliar with at the moment. And it's much faster. And in fact, as you progress through your course, you'll realize you'll use this method all the time. Okay, so let's start by redrawing our geometry, right? This is our flagpole just here. This is our flagpole. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to replace this force at an angle with two separate forces. I'm going to replace it with a horizontal force and a vertical force, right? And we can figure out what these must be by applying trigonometry directly. So in fact, to figure that out, let's draw our force again at 30 degrees from the horizontal. Right? And let's figure out what its horizontal component is, and let's figure out what its vertical component is. Well, if this is 10 newtons, that means that this right here must be 10 cosine 30 newtons, and this right here must be 10 sine 30 newtons. Right? So in fact, I can draw this right here. This is going to be 10 sine 30, and this right here is going to be 10 cosine 30. Right? And you might be thinking, well, why would you even do this? You seem to have made the problem a whole lot harder. Now, instead of having one force, we've got two. But in fact, it's made it so much easier because we can figure out that the moment about O is just the combined moment due to both of these forces. It's going to be FD. So let's do this one first. It's going to be 10 cosine 30. That's this force times by D, which in this case is four meters directly, right? Times by four times by four. And now let's see what the moment combined by this vertical force is. Well, it's going to be, in fact, let me draw it. It's going to be plus, it's going to be plus 10 sine 30, sine 30 times by the perpendicular distance from your force towards your axis of rotation, which is O in this case, which is actually zero, right? This force actually passes through point O. So the D value for this force is zero. Right? That's why this is so much easier. And in fact, when you plug this through your calculator, you'll realize that MO must be equal to this plus zero, which is 35 Newton meters. Now, is it clockwise or is it anti-clockwise? Well, if this is point O and this force is acting towards the right, it's producing a clockwise torque. So I'm just going to write this like that. That is your answer. That is your answer. This is your moment about point O due to this force. I hope that made sense, guys. As a separate exercise, I strongly recommend you try and solve it this way, and I promise you you're going to get the same answer. Cheers.